Shalom. Call hello la Yahweh by Shema Shab, which means all praises to Yahweh, which is the true name of the Heavenly Father, who you people in the world are going to be called God, by Hashem, in the name of Yahweh Shab, which is the name of the only begotten Son, who you people in the world are going to be called Jesus Christ. Once again, the true name of the Heavenly Father is only begotten Son, is Yahweh by Shema Shab. Also, Shalom to the you, you brothers, you Akim, that's pushing and spreading this word throughout the four corners of the earth. Shalom to you Akim. Shalom also uplifting the names Yahweh, Yahweh Shah, by the way. Uh, Shalom also to the Israelite foreigners, the speckled bird, man, woman, and child, whose bloodline traces back to Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, all forefathers. Though you may look like the heathen nation, you're scattered amongst, which the heathen nations, as you see on this chart, where the nations start from two on down, those are the heathen nations. Also, if your bloodline, your lineage goes back to these people, as you see right here. On this chart right here, through the man, and if the spirit bear witness with this word, this truth, you can receive it to the speckled bird, man, woman, and child. This does apply to you. You are Israelites, though you do look like the other nations are scattered amongst due to the scattering of these people in this chart. So you will have, once again, Israelites come looking like the other nations, but they're in fact Israelites because under the curses of Deuteronomy 28, the 15th verse on down, their spirit bear witness with this word. The day of the sons and daughters of Yahweh by Shemel Shah. And once again, most importantly, their lineage goes back to these people through the man, no matter what they come looking like. If their father's an Israelite, that makes them an Israelite as well. To a few Aqua, for you few Israelite sisters that do listen, learn, believe, Shalom to you. To the elect of the nation of Israel, if you may be scattered throughout the four corners of the earth, for this word is going out to, Shalom to you as well. Once again, to you so called Negroes, Latinos, Native Americans, you could bond, consist, and make up the 12 tribes of Israel. You are the Hebrew Israelites, the chosen people of the Most High, Yahweh, and His only begotten Son, who you ignorantly call Jesus Christ. Once again, Yahweh Shah. And um, I just wanted to uh, go in, bear with me, an article that I just came across you know, last night. That I want to uh, go in on. This is just recently. It says weddings in the COVID-19 era. They're happening but with compromises. And you still got people in the midst of destruction. You know. In the midst of all this chaos that's taking place on the planet Earth. You still got people thinking everything's, you know, fine. You know. Everything's just good, man. What the hell? Excuse me. Think every, They think everything. You know, they think themselves to be in the good case like the scriptures say, man. You know, they should not always they should not always be mindful of the scores. This is what you're seeing, you know. So I'm going to read this. It says, weddings in the COVID-19 era, they're happening but with compromise. It says, when the pandemic began in March, the wedding industry came to a complete standstill. So it says, Christine Quinn, uh, Tweedo's dream wedding. Yo. Slack you. Satan, you know, it's not letting, you know, it just keeps knocking me out. Look like the same article right here, so I'm going to just do it right here, you know. All right, so it says, weddings go on amid pandemic with some changes. It says, uh, Christine Quinn Tweedo's dream wedding didn't include cutting her guest list from around 400 to 130. And seating them 10 feet apart or installing a shield around the bar and placing monogram stickers on the ground to remind people to socially distance. Or buying matching face masks for staff at Arlington Hall at Tur 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 Turtle Creek Park to wear while they served a seated dinner. But the 26-year-old wasn't about to let a pandemic delay her wedding to a Daniel, to Daniel Tweedo. For a second time, when she finally walked down the aisle on June 26, the day turned out better than she expected, and that's pride, you know. That's the that's that's you that's the mindset you Babylonians, you know. I'm gonna do whatever I want anyway, you know. To hell with the uh, uh, the prophecies. To hell with uh, 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 of repenting, you know. Which these this right this couple right here could be just the eat my couple, you know, a heathen couple, you know. Says your dream about your wedding for your entire life, she said, to have to accept that it's just never going to be like you thought it was, was a really hard place to get get to. During a traditionally uh, busy summer months for weddings, brides like Tweedo are having to make major adjustments to pull off marriages in the COVID-19 era. 
It's also challenging wedding planners, cake makers, photographers, florists, and venues to get creative with how to keep typically intimate ceremonies from becoming super spreader patri dishes. Uh, as a bride, there's no way to prepare yourself for getting married during the global pandemic. Tweedo said we had more things that we weren't that we weren't going to be able to do than we were going to be able to do. Tweedo, who delayed her original May wedding to end of to the end of June, relied on wedding planner Jacqueline Hill to help her through the anxious and overwhelming moments leading up to her outdoor ceremony. A lot of guests themselves didn't know what to expect for COVID a COVID night COVID wedding. Said Tweedo, who had friends and family members decide not to attend for safety reasons. While she understood the importance of added precautions, she didn't want to miss out on any special moments like walking down the aisle or having a fifth dan first dance. She also didn't think it made sense to delay until next year. There's no guarantee that the future is going to be any different, she said. And you're right, okay? What's really marriage according to the scriptures is sex. This is not real marriage. This is just... Like I say, a con game, okay, by these uh, corporations, man. You know? Which, anyway, let me get the scripture, because this is, this is just more and more prophecy just being fulfilled, you know? This is happening in real time. The scripture said that these people will be doing that, you know? This is um Matthew. I'll start off with uh, Jeremiah 30. Actually, I'll get that second there, just 15. Because here it is. This show, just to show you how proud people are, these people are, you know. There's no such thing as uh, being meek or humble within the majority of these people out here, man. Okay? They can see a whole... Like they saw a whole explosion, a whole building uh, could be uh, exploded, right? Bomb, just like in Beirut, you had uh, a, a, a Lebanese couple. They were getting married, and then the explosion happened right when they were getting married. You know, so I'm gonna start off with this. Second Ezra 16, actually. You know, it's over. You see, this place is finished. You see, it's what people don't want to acknowledge. They don't want to acknowledge that this place is finished. They want to continue in their folly, you know? So let me actually get that. You know what? I'm going to get that. This is uh, Ecclesiastes 10. Don't want to pop up. Bear with me. This is Ecclesiastes, right? 10 and 5 says, There is an evil which I have seen under the sun, as an error which proceeded from the ruler. And who is the rulers of this world right now? These, uh, 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 the elites, man. The Edomites, man. They're ruling, okay, the world right now. And they're ruling it in error. Why? Because they're not implementing the law, statutes, and commandments. This is why you see so much wickedness on the planet Earth. This is why you see everything just corrupt, polluted, okay? Nothing can function straight. Because you got a, a wicked ruler, okay? And he's pushing out deception. He's pushing out this spirit of folly, which he's going to say in the next verse. This is what he's doing. Okay, to keep your minds on the fact that he's trying to set up a new world order. To keep your mind off the fact that he's he's falling, man. Okay? Folly is set in great dignity. And the rich sit in a low place was the rich that sit in a low place of who? The Israelites, man. But it's starting with what? The elect. Okay? We're in a low place right now as a nation. And folly it's set in great dignity. You even got a, a majority of our people partaking in, in this folly, man. Because this is nothing but folly, man. Just let me get what I was going to get in 2nd Ezra, the 16th chapter. 2nd Ezra 16, right? Because this is Ezra's talking. Woe is me, woe is me who would deliver me in those days. Because he was looking, okay, at the times we're in right now, that we're approaching right now. He's like, oh, damn. You know, who going who gonna to help me out in these times, man? You know, because it was so bad and chaotic, you know, that he, he you know, he he fainted, man. He basically was like, you know, you know, who's going to help me? But it says the beginning of sorrows and the great mournings, the beginning of famines and great death, the beginning of wars and the powers shall stand in fear, the beginning of evils. And what shall I do when these evils shall come? And this is what you see playing out right now. All these things are now playing out. It's now in your face. 
It's even to the point, like I always say, it's affecting your daily life. You know? All the things that you was able to do before the coronavirus came to uh, uh, fruition, okay? That's gone, man. Because prophecy is on you. That's what it is. This is why all this is happening. Behold, famine and plague, tribulation and anguish are sent as scourges for a minute. Which is scourge. If you're whipping somebody back, that's a scourge mark on their back. And that's what the Heavenly Father is doing with this place. He's whipping this place with plagues. Okay? But for all these things, they shall not turn from their wickedness. No, will always be mindful of the scourges. And this is why you see people. You still see people. They still, you know, shopping and, you know. Doing their average thing, man, with a smile on their face, knowing, not knowing that this place is going down, that the economy around them is, on, uh, is, is coming, is collapsing by the day, you know, that you got a famine, okay, we have famines happening, you know, you basically in World War Three. These people are not mindful of that. These people are basically, okay, uh, focusing on their day to day, basically focusing on, you know, what they want to do tomorrow, or, you know. What, what vacation or what sports going to do, you know? This is what these people are focused on. Folly. Setting great dignity, you know? The, um, let me get Matthew 24. That's okay. You know? That's okay. Because you won't be able to uh, escape the prophecies or the judgment to come. You could play it off like you don't see it happening. See what's happening. All you want. But at the end of the day, you are in prophecy. You are actually fulfilling prophecy. Okay? Just let me get that. Let me actually get that. Right? This uh Second Peter 3 and 3 says... I'm going to get to the point. Well, two says, no, nah, I'll get to the point. So, uh, first, first, second Peter 3 and 3 says, Knowing this first, that there shall come in the last day scoffers, walking after their own lust, and saying, Where is the promise of his coming? For since the fathers fell asleep, all things continue as they were from the beginning of the creation. My grandmother been telling me that eventually the world is going to end. You know, if the world is going to end, it's going to end, you know, 20, 50, 30 years, years from now. My grandchildren are old. That's how these people think. This is what the mindset that they're in. This is why they continue to uh, uh, do the things that they do, knowing destruction is on the horizon, man. Knowing that this place is going down. You still got people thinking that everything is uh, okay, that things are just going to continue on and on and on, man. Okay? And it's the same mindset that the people in the time of Noah had. So let me get that, you know? The same mindset, same things playing out right now. What's in the spirit, we're in the times of Noah right now. Okay? Whether you want to believe that or not. This is, um... Right? This is uh, Matthew 24, verse 36. It says, but of that day... Which the which, which what is it talking about? Jeremiah thirty seven talk about the day of Jacob's trouble, man. That's what we basically uh end the beginning stages of Jacob's trouble. So why are you seeing all those things? So I just read in uh Second Ezra the sixteenth chapter the famines, the the wars, you know, death. That's the time we in. It says, "No, if no man, no, not the angels of heaven, but my Father only. The only person that knows is Yahweh." Okay, who the world really calls God. He's the only one that knows the time, you know, the date, you know, the month, the complete second that he's going to utterly destroy this place, man. And you could just tell by the prophecies, he's getting ready to do that. He's getting ready to make do on his word, man, on his promise, you know. But these people don't see it that way. These people, they walk after the flesh, so they see the right here to right now. It says, but as the days of Noah were, so shall also the coming of the Son of Man be. For as in the days of days that were before the flood, they were eating, drinking, and marrying. And giving in marriage until the day that Noah entered into the ark. Because they thought Noah was uh crazy. You know, Noah telling them that you got to repent. Which mostly he was telling our people. He's telling them, uh, you got to repent. You know, the flood is coming. The flood is coming. And these people were probably what they was, this man is crazy. You know, he was laughing their ass off at him. 
you know? And then what happened? They just kept, you know, they kept doing their daily, uh, 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 they daily, uh, activities. And then what happened? It rained, and then it kept raining, and it didn't stop. And then all of a sudden, the people, they wanted to, they wanted to harpen all of a sudden, but it was too late. This is the same thing as getting ready to play out. Same scenario is really ready to play out right now, you know? And knew not until the flood came and took them all away, so also started coming the Son of Man be. The same thing is going to happen, man. Okay? And even before that happens, you know, you can't make this up. It's literally happened. You know? These people are literally doing the same thing that they were doing at times. No, because these are the same spirits coming back. Okay? A different empire in, the, in modern times. That's all. You know? Let me see. This is uh, Jeremiah 7. And... um. I'll get to the point. This is speaking to our people. It says, let me see. I'm just get to the point. This is Jeremiah 7 and 32. It says, Therefore, behold, the days come, saith the Lord, Yahweh, by Hashem that it shall no more be called Tophet, nor the valley of the son of Hinnom, but the valley of slaughter. For they shall bury in Tophet till there be no place. And the carcasses of this people shall be meat for the fowls of the heaven and for the beasts of the earth. And none shall fray them away. Then I will cause to cease from the cities of Judah, you Israelites. Okay, Judah, the so-called Negroes. You're the head tribe, you know, the house of Judah. You got the uh, house of Israel, the northern the northern kingdom, you know, the so-called Latin and native and Seminole Indians, you know. From the streets of Jerusalem, the voice of mirth and the voice of gladness, the voice of the bridegroom and the voice of the bride, for the land shall be desolate because this time it's not going to be water that's going to destroy this place. It's going to be... uh. It's going to be fire, man. It's going to be nuclear fire, man. The Lord going to burn you people up, man. You know? This is what's coming. And you, you know, you could act like it's not going to happen. It's going to happen. Everything else is happening, so it's going to happen eventually. The Lord is not slack concerning his promise. He says it's going to happen. It's going to happen. You know? And the only way you could uh, uh, be delivered out of this is, for one, like I always say, is if you're an Israelite and if you're of the remnant, the one-third, and if you repent, which the two thirds are not gonna do. You just had a, a a Jake. They was getting married, you know, in Hawaii, and a Karen, you know, even my woman, she came and stopped that. So the Lord is causing, you know, this folly to uh to end, man. Okay. So that was just a real quick, you know, topic, you know. I just wanted to go into, so I just want to uh, end it. Call hello, la ya how about Shima Sha. You know, Yahweh Ratzad is Elephant, you know, Baba Gasha, Baba Po, a Baba Po, a Baha Yapia, a Baha Yapia. Shalom to the elect and to the few Aquaf out there, you few is like sisters that do this and learn, believe, and repent it. Shalom.